Hey, how you doing? I'm Van, the only channel on YouTube that you're not legally allowed to be subscribed to. Apologies in advance if there are the sounds of explosions in the background on occasion. It is the 4th of July, and yes, I am spending my 4th <gasps> watching Captain Planet. Our world is in peril. Gaia, the spirit of the Earth, can no longer... But Captain Planet's a weird show. I know I'm not really surprising anybody with that statement. Anybody who's ever actually sat down and watched an episode of Captain Planet can kind of attest to the fact that it is a weird show. Originally designed as an educational program, it was... Sort of like a weird Nepo baby of Ted Turner's that ended up getting six seasons, despite being bad from the jump. Not one of the episodes on any of the six seasons have, like, higher than, like, a 7.5 on IMDb. I'm exaggerating a little bit, I think. I think a couple of them are in, like, the 7.8 range. But only a couple. And there's 113 of these bad boys. Like, there are a lot of episodes in Captain Planet. So I decided, ah, uh, what better way to spend the 4th of July than to watch the worst episodes of Captain Planet available? Uh, this is gonna end up being a multi-parter. I didn't really understand how rough Captain Planet was. And I don't just mean in terms of the story being weird or the animation being cheap. I mean everything. And yes, they are the worst episodes. But like, make sure you subscribe, please. Almost at a thousand. Getting real close. I would love a thousand subscribers before... I don't know, the end of the summer? I, I don't really have a deadline. We're starting with Season 1, Episode 13. Wonder Dam. The episode opens up with these tribal people on their riverboats, when suddenly, loot and plunder, and then this other guy. This other guy who I love, by the way. One instant dam going down, Mr. Plunder! Is that really his voice? They show up and drop an instant dam directly into the river. And what is an instant dam, you ask? Well, it's a multi-hundred-thousand-ton contraption that they just drop into the river with absolutely no problems whatsoever. I just wish they'd scream louder so I could hear them. Okay, no, that's just what he sounds like. That's not bad line delivery. Alert! Someone is in trouble down there! Oh. If only someone could control water, it'd be really helpful. Or, 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 or Kwame, you could use Earth to, like, raise him out of the water. I mean, that would work, right? Like, either, either of these things would be a good option, right? Not if I can help it. Uh, then he okay that, that's the latter there's a there's a strange lack of the planeteers like planeteering in this episode they're mostly just like regular tweens i guess teens something i don't know their ages are ambiguous but they're mostly just people that are just like doing things and that that kind of feels like it was originally the point like they could only use their planeteer powers as something of a last resort but uh just feels like their problems would be solved a lot easier if they actually used their their fucking magic rings. <laughs> also, didn't didn't he get knocked off? Is he a good swimmer? Is that all it is? Am I overthinking it? This is a notepad. So loot and plunders arrived to the village to sell appliances to them as part of his scheme to Later on, it's revealed that, like, he's trying to uh, bankrupt them with electricity so he can steal their land afterwards because he now legally owns it, even though he never bought it, just because he supplied them with power. It's really convoluted and also really dumb. Also, these appliance noises. These people need the river. What appliances make that noise? What... What, what tools make those noises? I, I can't, I can't think of a single one. Oh my god, why does he look like that? No time for games! This is no game! Get a load of this fence fried fruit! Where did he come from? That doesn't make sense, right? Like, based on where they were standing before, to where they're standing now, and where the truck had to come from, there were no roads, there were no pathways, there were no the trucks visible. I have a feeling we're not going to get any answers. We're just going to get more questions. Goodbye. Everyone profits at plunder. Whose goddamn white baby is that? What the? I'll take care of those Beat it. Stop nosing around here. Go. 
they won't bother us no more. Oh my god, what a fucking tool. <laughs> Like, who is this fucking guy? Why isn't he the main villain? He's the one causing all the ruckus. He's the one being a jerk to animals for no reason and causing destruction and mayhem. He's the one who sounds like an average Australian 16-year-old. <laughs> I didn't do any research on any of the voice actors, um... Minus the fact that, like, there are a lot of people that are actually kind of a big fucking deal in this show. Um, I assume because they were under contract with, uh, Ted Turner either Fox or TBS or TNT or whatever it is that Ted Turner owns now. But whatever he owned then, they likely were under contract with him, and he threw them at it just to garner attention to the show as his pet project. Something is very wrong here. Ah, yes. A good old-fashioned just summon all the dudes alarm. <laughs> Every worker in the entire factory, clearly, I mean, look how many there are. They had to spend a lot of money to animate this scene. But then, but then this guy's here also. How did he get here? Where was he? What's he been doing? Has he been busy? How did he know they would be here? I don't know. I don't have those answers. This scene raises something interesting about Hart. Because Hart is a little ambiguous as to what it does. But it seems like, at least in this episode, it is telepathy. And whether that's emotional telepathy or actual, like, thought-projecting telepathy, it's left also ambiguous. But Hart seems like a really, really good ability. It's just not immediately destructive. Typically, whenever he uses it, it fails. I will use my ring to try and calm them. It's no use. But that's besides the point. Right now, whenever it works, it's good. It's good stuff. Also, how do they get tied up so fast? Also, how far can they use the rings apart from each other to still summon Captain Planet? How far apart are they now? Why didn't Wheeler just use fire? The power is yours. Oh, hey, oh, and, and he's gone. Okay, alright, so that lasted approximately one minute. You know, for a show called Captain Planet, they really don't use Captain Planet that much. I get he's the problem solver, like, the Planeteers are the ones that try to solve the problem, fail every single time, and then use the power of a god to solve their issues for them. My people realize that they paid too high a price. Are you kidding? It seems like these episodes were animated by different studios in some cases. Or at the very least, certain scenes were thought about as only an afterthought, like when the episode was already almost done in production. I said that sentence weird, but you get what I mean, I hope. If not, well, too fucking bad, I'm not repeating myself. That really stands out to me as some of the worst animation I've ever seen in like a fully animated show. This was the 90s, this wasn't even the 80s or the 70s. There were some phenomenal animations well before that. This is just bad. Gadgets and appliances. But it is too late. It would seem that way. Your crops are ruined. The fish and game are dying. If only one of the planeteers could use their magical ring to move water. Dear me, what's the problem? Couldn't figure out the instructions. You greed monger. I'm terribly sorry, but I didn't come here to argue with you. I came to the fine chief here. What is this? Your electric bill. So this was the point where I, I kind of decided I like loot and plunder. He's a fun guy. Like, he's got some charisma. He's got some some pizzazz to him. Like, he, he's, he puts a little stank on his voice. Like, he's having fun in the booth. He's actually putting in some effort. I will make them regret this. Since those fools believe in their Niami Niami River God, I'll use it against them. <laughs> I'm going to give them their Niami Niami and kick them off my land. Whereas uh, a lot of the other actors and a lot of the other voice actors are clearly not. Uh-oh! What do you mean? I say that. They might have given it their all, and odds are their direction was really, really bad. And a lot of times, you run into an issue with this show where the character will deliver their line um, in a way that does not fit the situation whatsoever. And that's mostly due to them probably just reusing lines that they didn't originally intend, or giving them bad scene direction. Because they don't care about lip flaps in this show, I promise you. They don't, they don't ever match. We're not talking about that, because we'd be here all day. They're scared witless. 
I'll turn up the volume and give them something to really scream about. Whenever I first started watching this, I was genuinely like, oh my god, he is, well, like, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna, like, lead him to a cliff and threaten him? Is he gonna breathe fire? Like, how, how are the stakes gonna be upped? He just talks to him. And it doesn't even work. Give him your laugh. Do not listen to him. The show's so goddamn stupid. Especially when it's at its stupidest. That is no river god. His heart is as evil as loot and plunders. Wheeler. Fire! Oh, yeah, no, Wheeler, fuck, you can do that, right. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of just this himbo, like, this super-powered himbo, but he constantly forgets that he has powers and can only be, like, directed to do a thing for a few seconds at a time before he completely forgets whatever he's doing. But if that was a, an archetype, like a character trait or a character archetype, that'd be Wheeler, because he never uses his fire. Unless he's threatened, it's, like, significantly threatened, like, with death. But other than that, he usually will not use his fire. He is very sparing with it. It's out of control! Kwame, do something! <laughs> Kwame! Kwame, do something. Do anything. Do anything at all. Anything your heart desires, just do it. You have the, the power to move Earth. You have the ability to split the land, opening up giant chasm in order for these boulders to tumble in. Do something. Do anything. Please. Kwame doesn't actually do anything this entire episode. And, uh, Linka has just kind of vanished. I, I don't, I don't know where she is. I, I, it seems like she just kind of wandered off. Like she's having her own, her own adventures doing something. Our rings aren't going to cut it by themselves. It's time for teamwork. Then let our powers combine. Didn't he, didn't he just like go to sleep? He was just like, oh, oh, that toxic battery acid. Oh, man. Oh, I need to take a break. And then they summon him back because they cannot solve their problems on their goddamn own. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. Go, Planet! I will say the synth soundtrack in Captain Planet goes hard. Gotcha. Uh. Don't worry, folks. All of your problems are about to evaporate. <laughs> like, okay, all right, maybe Captain Planet's kind of all right, you know? <laughs> Like, maybe it's kind of cool after all. Maybe, maybe I was wrong this whole time. We will never let the likes of Loot and Plunder cheat us again. Oh, his name's Loot and Plunder. Oh, that's the lesson. I mean, he did just kind of show up and damn their river without their permission, their consent, or their ability to stop him. Not, not really sure how they could have prevented that part of the evil scheme. But yes, maybe you shouldn't, you know, buy things from the man who dropped a dam in your river and killed all the elephants. Go, Planet! Oh, hell yeah, Planeteer Alert time. Let's go, baby! The Planeteer Alert is easily the best part of the entire episode. It feels the most like what Captain Planet was actually supposed to feel like. It feels educational, it feels quick, and it feels like it's not pulling punches. This one really isn't a particularly bad one, but one of the good things that Captain Planet did was not shy away from the more mature aspects of pollution and harming the planet. You see a lot of instances where, like, people die in Captain Planet or are genuinely seriously injured or crippled, and this is for a kid's show in the 90s? That's some, that's some pretty hardcore shit. And they generally got away with it, too, be thanks to the meddling kids. That's partially true. The Hanna-Barbera money helped a little bit later on. Uh, they originally got away with it because of their generally positive message. The way that TV ratings work, sort of, is like there's like a karmic scale. Um, if you're an environmentally friendly TV show, you can threaten to kill children. However, if you're a sitcom, you can't fart on camera. Kind of balances out, you know? Oh my god, that was just the first episode. Fuck. Um, alright. I'm- brief intermission. I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Combined, I am Captain Planet. Captain Planet, he's our hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. 